This week on Expedition Drenched, we sail into an island group in the southern Great Barrier Reef called Heron Island. And Heron Island is one of those places that I've been hearing about since the moment that I entered into Australia. To go snorkeling, to go diving. We get to meet some incredible animals that we've all been crossing our fingers to see. And we're blessed to witness the miracle of life in its cutest form. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore the planet both above and below the surface. And see what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. places that I've been hearing about since the moment that I entered into Australia. So I'm really excited to be here. I think we've missed it, but it is a big turtle breeding ground. Um, so turtle hatchlings, and they have the HMSC uh, protector, like right out front at their entrance, which is a really cool little shipwreck. It's just supposed to be beautiful diving. And so we are almost there. And we've got perfect wind. It's like on our beam, uh, about 18, 20 knots. But we had to time it right, so we only put out a quarter sail. So we've just got little sliver sails out there so that we're only going like three, four knots. It's just creeping right ride in to Heron Island. Honestly, it could have been like a, a five, six hour sail, but we've made it a 10 hour sail. Yeah, it's been a pretty cruisy night, so. And yeah, we, uh, let's go check out Sunrise here. Nate and I are on the sunrise shift and we are pulling into Heron Island right about now and it's a gorgeous morning. It's kind of gloomy and cloudy and I really like it when it's like that. You don't feel like, I don't know, when the world wakes up it's not like hello world and it's so dramatic. It's just kind of like a gentle entrance into the day. I appreciate that this morning because I'm super sleepy. Um, but this place should be pretty cool. There's supposed to be some beautiful, beautiful diving here and we have a friend who works at the dive, the dive shop over on this island so I think she's going to give us some tips and tricks on where we should check out on this reef because we're just surrounded by two huge beautiful reefs so it should be really exciting. Let's go enjoy! Yeah, we know what happens, like we wake up in the morning, we are tired from uh, the night shift and everything and then we arrive at a beautiful place and we do nothing. So I'm gonna be the one pushing it today, we are pumping some tanks, meeting Agustina, I'm excited, she's from Argentina and she's, she's a diving instructor in the resort here in Heron. So she's gonna show us, she took a day off and she's gonna show us all the beautiful places that we can go. So I'm excited for it, I wanna take advantage of this day do as much as life as we can. Sorry, Nerea. It seems Mother Nature has a different plan. Thunder. Oh. Thunder. 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 Lightning. Scary. What's the word of the day, Lauren? Ominous. Ominous? <laughs> Would you call this day ominous? Dark and unforgiving. Yeah. What do you think of this word? <laughs> I like it, but I'm scared. Yeah, I'm scared. Big squall, lightning thunder is on its way right after we took the mooring. And it's just looking ominous and creepy. And 
on a mooring with 30 knots is never fun, but it looks like that's dying down. But we see and hear a lot of thunder and lightning, and that's just scary. So we're waiting for this to pass before we can go to shore. But for us, the rain is also a gift from the gods. Getting the hose for the to collect water on the roof too. Oh, look at this. It, sorry, I'm gonna put you down and wipe you. Oh, all of that is ours. Oh, 12 miles. Yeah, that's our storm. So more or less six miles around us. Four, four, six miles. It shouldn't, it shouldn't last like forever. So we should be fine. Have you been in a storm on a boat before? No, I, I haven't. But it's actually, I'm, I'm less scared now. It's yeah. Actually, pretty chilly. It's pretty <laughs> magical. You feel so safe here in the wheelhouse. Yeah. <laughs> Where everything is gray. Schools have passed, and now it's time to start going with the day again. Some people went to shore, so Chaitor and I uh, left on the boat, and well, Amy's sleeping. I don't know when they like getting up in the morning, but oh, Mr. Sun is shining down on me. Okay, boy, we are running. We have just got a call from Whoa. the radio. I got it. That there's baby turtles hatching. And yep. So we are about to fly there. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Here I go, ready now. I'm coming for you. Can't nothing stop me. I got some things I gotta do. Turtle hatchings! Ah. Ah, cool. Just like that, I feel like we're so lucky to have caught these guys because, yeah. Uh, apparently, uh, when it rains, as you saw that it did really hard earlier. They hatch any time throughout the day because sand temperature drops and they go, oh, it's like it's night time, which is usually the cue, the cue they get. And so that they start coming out. It's perfect timing because it's low tide for them. So they can kind of get here in the pool and spread out and make an escape. Because at high tide, you'd have sharks and rays and stuff gobbling them up right here. So I feel like this is going to be a very lucky group of little turtles that are going to make it. They're all going to be beautiful adults soon enough. Oh, How long so have you guys cute. been here watching them? Maybe 10 meters, yeah. there are so many. Oh my God, and they're so cute. Green sea turtles start life off with odds stacked against them. At only five centimeters long, they begin their race for their lives. Should they get stuck on the beach too long, they'll die of dehydration. So they run as fast as they can to the water's edge, all while hoping to avoid predators from the sky. But all is not safe when they reach the ocean, with others waiting for their next meal too. Only one in 1,000 will even make it through to adulthood. These babies will spend the next few years of their life at sea, being swept around by currents, mostly snacking on squishies. As they mature, they travel up to three and a half thousand kilometers to reach the feeding sites and mating grounds, returning every two to four years, only laying their eggs on the beach where they were born. Scientists believe this is why it's vitally important that humans don't interfere with their journey along the beach, as they imprint on the location and will use it to return years later. If they can't make it back, they'll never lay any eggs, adding to the declining population of their species. They're currently listed as endangered, with their numbers decreasing globally. In some places, they're hunted, and their eggs are collected by humans. Many die after becoming trapped and entangled in fishing nets, and the increasing plastic pollution floating in the ocean looks similar to their food source, resulting in entanglement or ingestion of plastic material, making them too buoyant to dive down, leaving them stranded at the surface to die. 
hopefully through increased awareness, some drastic changes to our fishing practices, and pressure on governments to make choices from an environmental standpoint. The future of these little guys will be positive, allowing us to enjoy the magic of watching them hatch to continue forever. How was your first turtle hatching? Amazing. Yes? Yeah. My heart is, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> I can't even find the words for it. I feel like we're really lucky it's late in the season. Very so. lucky. Yeah. And Megan and I just spoke about that like five minutes before and then we came here. And they're hatching, we're like, what? <laughs> Hi there! Hi! Nice to meet you guys! Hi, where are you from? <laughs> I'm from Argentina. Nice! Yes. And how long have you been working here on Heron? Oh, I, I'm this paradise for the last four months already. Oh, so nice. finally, as a dive instructor, enjoying the reef. Yeah. What gorgeous. All right, it is dive time. And this is my getaway driver. Look! Woo! <laughs> Yeah, we're ready to go rob a bank. Who is that? Yeah, yeah, what is it? Agostina, what's the name of this dive site? I don't know if you know it, but it's called Heron Bombing. <laughs> Very famous. I love it, the famous one of the island, man. Yeah. So we are fingers crossed to see if we can find the manta on the clearing station. Mm. Ready for those mantas, the visibility looks really nice. Mm. Why so, is it so famous? What's so cool about it? I think it's like stopping station for all the animals uh, that came on the channel, you know? It's like always something going on, like some schools, plenty of school of fishes, and then the mantas, sharks, Perfect. you know, everything happens here. Nice. It's like the hot spot. A little stop off, a <laughs> little rest stop for the fishes. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go scuba diving, Let's go! Let's go scuba! Logger head with a neck on head like massive and I get to swim right next to it. Like I was literally almost touching it, but I didn't touch it, but like wow that was awesome. So I feel really spoiled diving wise because I really saw so many things. So many things and it's just the beginning of my diving career, you know? So I'm so happy about that. Good morning.
morning, girls. Good morning. Uh, how are you doing today? Morning. How was last night? Tell me about it. I think my favorite one was all the Eagle Race. Yeah. The school of Eagle Race just on top of us. They surround us and then turn to our left and this school of, of rays just came elegantly swimming by and then just seemed to come right over us and yeah, it was spectacular. So cool. Oh, I love it. I love that first moment when you see something that you're not expecting you're like, oh, look at that. You know, that the, first the, time. the shock and the stone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so special. So cool. And how about sleeping outside? The first night in Sofia. Gorgeous. I mean, almost full moon, all the stars. Maybe the wind was perfect first for your face, and then no wind at all. I just love it, just surrounded by ocean. No. Nos vamos! Woohoo! Thank you very much. Thank you, Sofia. <laughs> Thank you, Station. See you, Sylvia. Drop you off and. Time to get back home. Yes, I don't mind. I like my home as well. Yeah. <laughs> nice neighborhood, huh? And so it was time for us to say goodbye to Heron Island too. Next time on Expedition Drenched, we leave Sylvia behind to visit the neighboring One Tree Island. A marine sanctuary zone, this island is the location for countless marine sciences and some of the best marine life we've ever witnessed. Okay. 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 <laughs> It is starting to look spooky and ominous again. Ah, I'm just sitting here chilling on the surface, waiting to see a dive flag, especially when you see this creepy cloud behind me. Oh my god. so cool looking. It seems like Gotham is coming you. <laughs> Gotham City? Yeah, Gotham yeah. City. <laughs> I forgot the lights and the camera. Amateur hour. It's okay. I've, I've jumped in without memory cards. I've yeah. jumped in without battery. Yeah, yeah. today it happened. I jumped and I was uh, the first five minutes. No, the first two minutes I was like, ah, looking around and then now I'm gonna turn on the lights. The lights. Ah, there's no more. There's no more. And then you can see it through. <laughs> ah, it's empty. <laughs>